um, for you all to give a hearty welcome to Ms. Kim Lyles Folkman. She is advertising instructor extraordinaire and she has been doing her doctoral work in visual thinking and she is actually the portfolio instructor and teaches uh, many other classes in the advertising department and she has volunteered to come and share with us today about how to develop a digital portfolio. Of course you all know we've been doing it for a couple quarters uh, but we can always use some information on how to make it stronger. So, Ms. Kim, thank you. Hi everybody. Um, I've seen most of you around. As I'm looking around, I'm like, I've seen them. Okay, so what level are you guys at? Senior last. Seniors? Okay, so you are ready to do your portfolio, yes? Yes. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk to you guys from the standpoint of um, my portfolio class, which I've been teaching for many, many years between here and I taught in Philadelphia for many years at many universities, so I also taught portfolio there. Um, what I am thrilled to know is that, you know, what we're doing in the portfolio class is, is working, you know, as is I'm sure with you guys too. We know it works when you guys go out and get jobs, yes? Okay, so that's what the bottom line is, to get a portfolio so that you can actually communicate that your, what your knowledge base is. And what happens too often, and that's what I'm kind of, you know, trying to express through uh, visual thinking, is that, you know, what happens too often is people um, don't communicate exactly what they're thinking. And sometimes the challenge is that they don't know how. And sometimes the challenge is that you're frustrated. And sometimes the challenge is you're rushed. But the reality is, um, I'm going to try to help you guys um, cut through some of that and take some shortcuts and get you, you know, to have a really great out outcome as far as the book. Okay, so that's going to be our goal. All right, um, really quickly in a nutshell, um, in terms of visual thinking, I'm going to talk about some visual thinking principles. Now, if you're a designer, you've gone through design school, then sometimes it comes a little easy. You know, a little easier because you've already gone through the courses in terms of visual you know, methodologies and things of that sort. If you haven't actually gone through all those uh, processes, sometimes it's a little tougher um, because you're like, well, I know this should be in a certain way as far as layout, but it's not working and I don't know why, right? So we're going to talk about some of that and I would like a crash course on how to design a portfolio um, in and out. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Now, really quickly, my background is I've been teaching for many, many years and I've taught here. I taught in Philadelphia. Um, I taught at Drexel University, uh, University of the Arts, Fort College of Art and Design, so a lot of art schools as well as education schools. And um, what's interesting is throughout my life I've done a lot of work in the advertising and marketing field. So as far as the portfolio, um, it's very important to me because that's how I actually got jobs too. And some of my client base, base has included um, people that you guys probably know like Patti LaBelle, right? Um, I did all of her work for her. Um, when she had a store, which that really relates to you guys. We had to do everything from labels to billboards to uh, newspaper, uh, magazine, uh, you name it. All the labels and things that occurred in the store, I pretty much did all of that, including shopping bags. Uh, did a lot of work also, so I did this whole clientele that was celebrity clientele, so I also did Bill Cosby. I did a lot of work for him, and mainly in the area of menu design, because you said a lot of bits. So um, again, the way that I got a lot of these jobs was through my portfolio. And then I did a lot of work for uh, the largest ad, um, it was actually a hotel, the largest hotel which no longer exists, in Antigua, but um, did all of their work from A through Z. So full service work in my design agency. But again, I have to tell you guys, could not get, have gotten those jobs if it were not for my portfolio. Okay, so portfolio is critical. It means that you can actually get out and in some cases make in the 50s, in your cases, and we just had a student who was ju who just graduated who's making in the 50s. Un unbelievable, right? Um, really an amazing book. Uh, we had another student, she just graduated, and she actually had a, um, she got several awards, being Addy Awards, Advertising Addy Awards, and she actually had a really strong book, which I'm going to share with you guys, and you'll see how she actually organizes things, and you'll see her thought process. Um, and what's so interesting about the, the diversity in the portfolios is that each one of you will get out of a different portfolio. But what's going to be so important is that you guys start to uh, talk to each other. You know, it's not copying, it's not, you know, stealing ideas, it's sharing ideas. And in this day and age, what's most important is collaboration. And collaboration is going to definitely make you have a healthier portfolio. So, for example, if you know something about writing that maybe she doesn't know, then you want to share that with her. If she knows something about, you know, the ideation process, then you want to share that with her and so on. And you want to help each other out, okay? If you have to talk to each other via Facebook or you have to talk to each other, you know, after class, in class, whatever you have to do, group exercises are really great. Again, rub 
brains. I always tell my students, rub brains, you know, so you can actually share what another person has. Okay, so it's not copying, it's sharing, right? Uh, now, I do want to say that you don't want to copy in terms of like, you see something, uh, you don't want to copy it exactly. I mean, everything's been done before in the design world for the most part, but if you see something that works, just say, how does that work? What can I borrow from that? And how can I apply it to my own book? Okay, and that's what you're looking at. I do that all the time. My inspiration, so to speak, comes from other designers. And I look at the inspiration, I get inspired, I say, oh, I'll take a little bit of that as far as color, a little bit of that as far as something else, and so on and so on. Okay, so that's essentially how um, you want to kind of think about the broad uh, components of your portfolio. Okay, so we're going to just kind of go through, I gave you guys a handout. I'm going to go through some items. I'm going to do some uh, whiteboard and visual thinking um, uh, graphic facilitation as I go. And I'm going to also show you um, portfolios of students that I think are very successful. Um,